Would you take your Bible and turn with me to the Old Testament book of Jeremiah? Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. And I love that song. And we're, we're going to go down to the potter's house this morning. In God's Word, we're going to take a little visit to the potter's house. And look at this passage of Scripture. It's fascinating to me how a potter can just take an old lump of clay throw it on the wheel and fashion it into something that is beautiful and something that is quite valuable and it all emerges from that lump of clay not because of the clay necessarily but because of the potter's hands the skill of the potter so look with me this morning here in Jeremiah chapter 18 beginning with verse 3 and I want to show you four lessons that we learn at the potter's house. And let's stand together to read the word of God to show our respect for God's holy word. Verse 3, Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now Israel was in God's hand, and you and I are in God's hand this morning. So let's pray together. Our Father, we ask you to teach us as we visit the potter's house today from your word. Help us to understand the significance of this for our lives today, the application. And Lord, we ask you to drive it deep into our hearts and help us to live it in accordance with your will. In Jesus' name we pray and the church said amen thank you please be seated keep your bible open there before you and i want you to notice first with me verse six once again and we see there it says as the clay is in the potter's hand so you are in my hand now that's talking about the possibility of a yielded life and i want you to look at this with me god is the potter we are the clay Think about a lump of clay for a moment. In and, of, in and of itself, a lump of clay is totally helpless. I mean, what can a lump of clay do? It can just sit there, can it? There's not much an old lump of clay can do. And we are the clay. We're like that clay. God made Adam from the dust of the earth. I just looked up. A couple of days ago, the monetary value of the basic elements in a human body, and do you know how much we're worth? Four dollars and a half a piece. And three dollars and fifty cent of that is skin. So we're not worth very much. We're like that lump of clay. We're just totally helpless. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works you see in that verse we read about the possibility of a yielded life when the potter takes that lump of clay and he puts it on the wheel then something wonderful begins to happen and when god takes you and me and he puts us on his wheel when we're yielded to him he turns the wheel and he molds us and he shapes us into exactly what he wants us to be and we become something beautiful and valuable in his hands you know god is in control of every circumstance in our life nothing comes to us by accident or happenstance god knows everything that we're going through in every season of our life and can you not look back and think of things in your life and remember that they may have seemed coincidental at the time but as you look back you know they were providential 
that God was in those circumstances in your life, even though you didn't understand it at the time, later on you could see it was God at work. I was a young man sitting in church on a Sunday morning over here on 8th Street. It's Lenore Ryan Boulevard today. And in walked four young ladies from Lenore Ryan College that I'd never seen in my life before. But I perked up when they walked in. And the third one had on a yellow sundress with a flower in her hair. And my heart just did a flip-flop. And the Holy Spirit seemed to say to me, there's the girl you've been praying about. She's going to be your wife. Now, it took me a little time to get up the nerve to, to tell her that. <laughs> but I was thinking, Tanya, what if I hadn't been in church that morning? Look at what I would have missed out on. If I hadn't been in, so some of you, you need to come to church. <laughs> you, you don't know what you're going to miss out on. And God was working. It was his providential will. That was not by accident. That was not coincidental. That was God at work in my life. And you'll never convince me otherwise. And so it doesn't make sense to us sometimes, but God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. Sometimes we think if we were God, here is the way we would do it. And we probably won't admit that we think that, but everybody knows that most of us have, and I can tell you right now, it would be a big mess. That's what it would be. Can you say amen? We'd be like a boy I heard about who was sitting under an oak tree and he was looking out at a watermelon patch and he said you know if I were God I wouldn't put those great big watermelons on that weak little vine out in the field and the little acorns on this big oak tree that seems backward to me about that time an acorn fell and hit him in the head and he was glad that that was not a watermelon <laughs> you see God knows what he's doing and we just have to trust him and we have to yield our life to him. When we cannot understand the circumstances that we're in, we just yield our life to him and we trust him because God is the potter and we are the clay. You know something I've learned along the way? God will turn every Calvary into an Easter if we'll wait long enough and keep our eyes on him. Amen? I mean, he'll do that. And that is the possibility of a yielded life. So I want to ask you a question. Are you yielded to him today? Will you allow God to mold you after his will? Will you say, Lord, you are the potter, I am the clay? You see, that's the possibility of a yielded life. Number two, we see here the drawback of a disobedient life. The drawback of a disobedient life. Look at verse 4 in Jeremiah 18. It says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. Circle that word marred. Was marred in the potter's hand. So we see here in this verse the drawback of a disobedient life. Imagine the clay is on the wheel and the potter is molding that clay. Then something happens. And all of a sudden that clay is marred because the potter sees some impurity in that clay, something that prevents it from being exactly what the potter wants it to be. And the same is true in our life. There may be some hidden impurity. There may be some hidden sin that is marring us and keeping us from what God wants to do in our life. Or it could be that the, the clay is, is too stiff and it's not pliable. It's not broken enough. And so we have to be broken to be yielded to the hand of the potter. And I wonder if that could be said of us today. Could it be said that the potter cannot use us because of the drawback of a disobedient life? One of the greatest Christian writers of all time was a man named F.B. Meyer. He had two friends, one named Charles and the other named Hudson. F.B. Meyer watched these two friends of his because they were always so full uh, of joy. 
And one day, F.B. Meyer went to his friend Charles, and he said, Charlie, you have so much joy in your life. You have something in your life that I don't have. Tell me about it. And his friend Charlie said, there's nothing that I have that you cannot have. Well, F.B. Meyer said, well, how may I have it? And his friend looked him in the eye, and he asked him this question. He said, F.B., have you given everything in your life over to God? Have you given everything over to God? Well, Meyer went back to his room that night, and he began to pray. And I want you to listen to what he says, and I'm quoting him here. He said, I wrestled with God that night until I finally came to the place where I had to do something. And I took the keys out of my pocket, a bunch of keys, and I said, Lord, here it is. Here is the key ring. These keys represent my life. I give them to you. And he said it was as if the Lord said to me, are all the keys there? He said, yes, Lord, they are all there except for one small key. It's the key to a little cupboard, and it's not on the ring. It's just an inconsequential thing, just one little key. And he said the Lord handed him back the keys and started to walk out the door, and he said, wait, Lord, don't go. It's just a little key, and the Lord kept walking. And he said that, please come back, Lord. Here are all the keys. And he said the Lord took those keys every one of them, and began to do a work in me, and I was transformed. You see, we have to give him all the keys. We can't hold back those keys that we think are, are little inconsequential keys. We have to have a yielded life, and, and if we don't, we will see the drawback of a, a disobedient life. Then number three, we see in this story of the potter, the blessing of a repentant life. Look at the latter part of verse 4. It says, So he made again, he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. I'm so thankful that God is the God of the second chance. Are you? He is the God of the, the second chance. Our life may be marred today by some sin some little key that we have refused to, to give to God. But this teaches us that God is willing to forgive us if we are willing to repent. And this is the blessing of a, a repentant life. I talk with people all the time about this nation. And some believe that it's too late for America. I want to tell you something. It's not too late if we will come back to God. Not if we truly come back to God. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That's hard for Americans. We shall humble ourselves and pray and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways. That's repentance. Repentance means to, to turn. You see, we want to have it both ways. We want to say, God, I want to walk with you, but I want to hold on to this. And God says, no, you can't do that. If you want to walk with me, you have to let go of that. Give that to me and let me forgive you and let me make the slate clean and let me give you the power and strength to live the Christian life. If your life is broken today, if you have been marred by sin, I'm going to invite you in just a moment to go down to the potter's house and give God all the pieces of your life. And God will make a beautiful vessel out of you. I want to show you just one more thing and we're finished. And that is the danger of a rebellious life. The danger of a rebellious life. You may be thinking this morning, you know, Ed, I like the way I'm living. And I don't care what you say, I'm not going to repent. Because I'm going to live the way that I want to live no matter what. I'll mold my own life the way I want it. Well, I want you to see something in God's Word. Turn over to chapter 19 and look at verse 1. 
Thus says the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen flask and take some of the elders of the people and some of the elders of the priests and go out into the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the potsherd gate, and proclaim there the words I tell you to proclaim. Now look down at verse 10. Then you shall break the flask in the sight of the men who go with you and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Even so I will break this people in this city as one breaks a potter's vessel which cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there is no place to bury. Thus I will do to this place. Look down at verse 15. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on this city and on all her towns all the doom that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks that they might not hear my word. It is a dangerous thing to live a rebellious life. If you understand that, say amen. It's very dangerous to say I'm going to, to do it my way. I'm not going to, to live for God. You see, that clay becomes hardened, and it may be a deformed vessel, but it will become hardened. And that's the danger of a, a rebellious life. We can sit in this building this morning and we can talk about unwillingness to yield to the Lord or we can be broken and say, Lord, I yield to you, I repent. Take me and mold me and make me. Or we can fold up our arms and say, it's my life. I'm going to live it the way I want. I'm not going to yield. Well, that's your privilege. But I want you to understand something. If you choose to rebel against God, you are going to be hardened in that position. Once the clay is hardened, the potter cannot remold it. Sometimes people want to know. And they ask, do you think I've committed the unpardonable sin? Listen, I, I want you to understand something here. The truth of the matter is, if you're concerned about that, you haven't committed it. The person who has committed the unpardonable sin has no concern about it at all. But people can become so hardened in their rebellion against God, and they won't repent and they can become so stubborn that there comes a point in God's economy of time when God says, that's it, no more, you cannot be remade. Jot down Proverbs 29.1, and here's what it says. <clears throat> he that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Did you know that there are people, maybe in this building, maybe someone who will see this on television. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. I've heard people say, and I believe it's true, that preachers don't preach like they used to, but maybe we don't hear like we used to. We have eyes, but we don't see. We have ears, but we don't hear. We have become so hardened in our sin. The clay is fixed and hardened and can no longer be molded. If we were to go out into the woods where there has been a fire, we might see an old pine stump out there, and the fire has been burning all of the pine trees and all of the bushes, but there's one stump out there that when the fire came the first time, that stump had pine rosin in it and pine tar that just burned bright like you were pouring gas on it, and then it went out. And let's suppose that the underbrush grew up, and three or four years later there comes along another fire, and that fire burns furiously. When it gets to that stump, it may ignite that stump again, but this time it will not burn nearly as bright. There may come in time down the road uh, another fire, and when it comes to that stump, that stump is blackened and charred. It doesn't even glow. 
the fire jumps right over it. That happens in our lives. That happens with our souls. We can get so hardened in our willingness not to turn and yield to God that if we're not careful, God just passes us by. The Bible talks about it. In Romans 1, 24, it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to a reprobate mind, hardened, believing they're all right, believing they're saved when they are not. Scripture teaches us here today that He is the potter and we are the clay and we are to respond to Him. And the wisest thing that any of us could ever do is to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that today, we're asking you to make that decision. We appeal to you during the invitation to say, Jesus Come into my life. What am I trying to say today? There's an old song that sums it up. It says, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. And all of God's people said, Let's stand together here and in the Christian Life Center. Let's stand together. And the invitation this morning is for you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. The invitation is for you to, to come to the potter's house and give your soul to the Lord. Or maybe you're like F.B. Meyer and, and you're holding that little key back. You've given him all the other keys, but there's one little key to the cupboard of your heart, and you need to let Him have it, and you know exactly what it is because the Holy Spirit has already spoken to your heart. You need to come this morning and lay that key down here on the altar of God and give it to Him and walk out of here knowing that you are living a yielded life. You come as we sing.